Hello. Hello, Facebook. No, YouTube. Oh, YouTube. YouTube Live. We don't do too many YouTube no. Lives. It's all about no. Facebook Live, but we do like YouTube Live. I'm never sure where to look. Where are we looking at for the camera? Oh, it's over here. Okay, so um, YouTube Live. What's the hardest part about owning a restaurant? Well, I think we just everything. did everything. I think we just I think we just did the easiest part. We met with a wine, wine sales yeah. sales rep. Well, that's the fun part. That's the fun it might part, not be right? The easiest part because some of them, not all of them, are pushy and want you to buy their wines. A lot of salesmen are pushy, pushy. and they come here and they don't understand what you need and try to sell you stuff and hey, I don't need this and so now don't get me wrong, owning a restaurant can be lots of fun. It can Amazing. be very rewarding. It's very um, you know, um, what do I want to say? It's, it's fulfilling. It's very fulfilling owning a restaurant, especially with our mission, because our mission is green, um, you know, just serving real food, and we have a really strong mission and opinion on food. We like to call ourselves the anti-corporate headquarters. And bar. We have a and bar, right. Opinion. We have a strong opinion on, on the food that we want to serve and we want to eat ourselves, and that's what we want to serve. We just won't buy anything and serve it. But the hardest part about owning a restaurant, here we go. Is? Staffing. 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 <laughs> Staffing. See, we didn't even plan that. <laughs> we didn't that's plan it. You, you didn't know what this video was about. No, I had no idea until And I just said, go live. So, um, yeah, staffing. A lot of our restaurant friends, owner friends are when like... When you find good staff, keep them. Do what you have to to keep them. Yes. Because finding new staff to replace that old staff is really hard. We had a kid come in here that talked a huge game in his interview. Oh my interview. God, the interview. The interview, a huge game. I've I done like, this, wow. I've done that. He came in for his cooking interview and lasted 12 minutes. 12 minutes. And walked. He was gone. He didn't even say goodbye. Didn't he didn't even say goodbye. Fine. He turned around and we're like... Hey, where is he? And the busboy was like, yeah, he went out the front door like <laughs> 10 minutes ago. And, and you said you saw him walking down the I street. I saw him walking down the street and I thought, oh, he's done already? Yeah. But no, he actually He totally skipped. Out. And we had another kid that uh, I called him at 10.30 in the morning and I woke him up. <laughs> he had cooking experience, five years of cooking experience and talked a great game. I need a job. My girlfriend's having a baby, this and that. And never actually showed up. Never showed never up for the interview. Um, it's, I mean, the the workforce is, it's a challenge to get people that want to work. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of you out there that want to work, that are busting your butt, they're doing a great job. And some of you are with a great employer and some of you aren't with a great employer. I like to think that we're a better employer. Like today, we're taking our staff to a brewery and we're going to have a good time mm -hmm. at the grand opening at Equilibrium Brewery. We're going in the Aroma Time van. Um, it's Wednesday. We're closed. We're not closed every Wednesday, but it's a special time of the year that we are closed. So this has been my latest theory I've been explaining to people. I'd rather call an old staff member who wasn't perfect. And know what you're getting. And know what I'm getting, right? Because if I can call an old staff member and say, hey, what are you doing right now? Are you interested in coming back to work for me? I know 100% upfront what I'm getting right then there because I know what the person's mm -hmm. shortcomings capable, are. Capable of. I know what their, their strong points are. I know that upfront. You hire another employee, a new employee. You have to learn everything new about them. You could take two, three months to learn this person's a total idiot, that this person's Which vindictive. Which just happened to us. Right, right. You, <laughs> that this person's vindictive or that they And the funny thing is, the person that just left, we had issues with the first time he was here, but he was only here for what, like a day or something? He was here for a couple days, a couple years days. ago. So, you know, it, it, you don't know sometimes you don't know until, until a, they work here or work at your right. place for a couple of weeks, couple of months. So I'm telling my restaurant friends, I'm like, call people who've worked for you, even if they're not perfect, because you're going to know right up front what, what you're, you're getting. getting. And you can deal, I can deal with knowing that, hey, somebody has tardiness issues, but I know that they worked for me for a year or two years. I know they're going to come through. But we were at a point here that... A few weeks ago. <laughs> that we were just trying to get through one or two shifts with an employee. I would say if this employee can give me the weekend, I'll be okay. And that's a tough feeling to be in. Yeah. To say, hey, I'm hiring a new dishwasher. If this dishwasher gives me three shifts, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It shouldn't be like that though. I'll worry about next week when next week comes. Because I have my main dishwasher and we have a secondary dishwasher. We have two full-time dishwashers, but it's that third dishwasher that we need. So I'm thinking, man, if I can get somebody just to fill yeah. three positions this week, I'll worry about that. I, we hired somebody who was a complete, complete alcoholic, mm. total alcoholic. <laughs> and we knew it going into it, but I'm like, all I need is three shifts. Just get me through this just week. Get us and, through this. I'm just hopeful that we were getting through So that. the labor, you're, you're, if you want to own a restaurant, 
your labor, your payroll is your single biggest expense. Hands down, doesn't matter. I don't care if your rent is 50,000 a month or 5,000 a month. Your payroll is the biggest expense. Oh, Our payroll runs 4,500? Yeah. A week, 4,500 a week. That's more than two times my mortgage. So people think, people are always stuck on, 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 your, on your mortgage or your rent. No, labor's where you're gonna make your money. Labor's how you can control your money in this, in this industry. Food cost is one thing. Food cost is 30% of, what, of what's going out, of, of what's coming in. So here's a great test that we like to give our new employees. It's called yeah, the penny test. penny test. You put 100 pennies on the bar, you say to an employee, say, guess how many pennies out of the 100 that go into the register do Jamie and Marcus put in our pocket saying, hey, this is profit for ourselves. And you'd be surprised because most employees are like, oh, you 50%. get 50%, you get 50 pennies or 30 pennies go in Jamie and Marcus's pocket. Mm -hmm. They think we're raking it in. They think we're living it high, we're raking it in. So and then we break it out yes. by labor. Yes. And we break it out by food costs. And the number goes way down. And they're way like, down. whoa. They like stop and think about you're not raking in the money. You're not bringing in more than a few pennies. Right. So the average restaurant brings in Five. A two to ten percent profit. Yeah. So that's two to ten pennies out of that hundred pennies that go into the register actually go into your pocket. So if you figure that you're doing you know a half a million dollars in sales in a small mom and pop place and you're putting two to three to four percent in. That's not much not at much. all, people. That's a lot of work. And for if you're doing little, less than that, for very little payoff. Mm -hmm. Now, in the restaurant industry, where you make your money is on larger volume. So, any like TGI Fridays, I was reading some numbers a few years ago. Mm -hmm. If they do 1.5 million dollars in, in a location, they make like 10 percent. But if they do two and a half million dollars in that same location, because you almost need the same labor, because the same person can cook one burger every two minutes or they can cook two, two burgers, burgers every two minutes. Right. So the same employee can actually double the production because they're standing there anyway occupying space. You don't need much more much more labor. Right. So if they do two and a half million, they're gonna bring 25% to the bottom line. But that two and a half million is a busy restaurant. That's a, busy restaurant, That's yeah. a, oh, a million and a half is yeah, a busy, busy restaurant. We do 800,000 and we're a busy restaurant. Mm -hmm. We have 60 seats here and we're busy. Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh my gosh, some days it's like, wow. We were so busy and so short staffed the last three weeks, two <laughs> weeks. You and I were cooking ourselves Monday nights in the kitchen, mm -hmm. Tuesday nights and in the kitchen. Tuesday. And there are some Thursdays. We were had to close Wednesdays because we just couldn't pull God, it off. We can't do seven days. There's I, it was, no way. I was I was up this morning at four o'clock working on stuff for Run Like the Wind, and then I got right on our website and started doing stuff. Yep. And we were here. It's now four o'clock, four thirty. We're relaxing, but I got to tell you, that is I, our day off. <laughs> it is our day off. Uh, how much did we I? We haven't had quite a day off yet, but we have had a day off. <laughs> how much did I cook today? A lot. I cooked what? 80 pounds of 120 pounds of chicken I cooked today. I was in the kitchen a lot. But back to the last two or three weeks, I was working 19 hour days. Yeah. I get home for five hours. I left stuff in the oven, people. I left stuff in the oven knowing I was coming right back in a few hours, saying, I'm gonna only be right back in a few hours if I'm roasting something, leave it in and let it fly. And that's what I did one of the nights. Yeah. Um, so the hardest part, people, of if you're thinking about opening a restaurant think, is think. <laughs> is the employee factor. Yeah. And a lot a lot of a lot of restaurateurs say, I just wanna slow down, I wanna open up, get a food truck, I wanna be a one man show. But then the business person is saying, Well, on a one man show you're not gonna make money. You're not gonna the, the, yeah. you can't scale things. The most important thing I ever learned uh, it's hard to make $100,000 doing a $10 an hour job. And most restaurant owners jump into the trenches and they work their business instead of working on their business. Right. And it's been driving me crazy the last couple of weeks because I haven't been able to work on my business because I've been working yeah, but in my business. You are ultimately working on your business though. You are because you're training people and you're I'm training, making I'm them, You're right, I'm training people, I'm setting up systems. I'm doing and systems. you're learning the systems that you haven't been quite a part of. You're hundred percent right so, on that. You're hundred percent so right on that. In the long run, it's going to pay off. In the short term, it doesn't feel like it's going to. But when it's when I say I, I can't even get time to go on Facebook to do a, a Facebook event yeah, to do a promotion or to send an email out right. to our guests, that's the part where I'm like, oh man, that's the part that sucks. I'm doing all this work and I don't have time to go on the computer and mm -hmm. send an email to show off what I'm doing. Yeah. And so, you will. The time will come again. Time will come again. We just had a very crazy, busy week. So. The good news is we have two new... Two new employees. Two new 
cooks in the kitchen yep. that are kicking ass right now. And we're super excited. Two new about. ones. And one of them was an old one that used to yep. work for me. Right? So I called them and said and said, Hey, you know, I'm calling you because I got a job opening and I, I saw, you know, I saw you posted somewhere and he wasn't expecting my phone call because no, he, he worked here yeah. six years ago. Was not expecting my phone call. And I said, hey, the reason I'm calling you is because I know what I'm getting. I know your limitations. And I was actually quite, quite surprised impressed with, what, with he's what he's doing right now and where he's at in his life. Mm -hmm. And I agree 100%. Right? Yeah. Totally, totally a different person than he was when he was here six, seven years yeah. ago. And then he knew a friend that said can come in that's to that's coming that's totally stepped it up. Totally stepped it up. So I now going from one line cook <laughs> yeah. three weeks ago, I now have three solid yeah. line cooks again. And I think the one thing that people everybody needs to remember if you're in business, there's always a cycle, right? Always. Yeah. Winter, spring, summer, right? Yep. It's just like the stock market. Mm -hmm. Winter, spring, summer, just like any business cycle. You're gonna get down and out and it's gonna happen once a year. We're at a point where, gee, either I have way too many employees, yeah. and I'm like, I can't afford all these, and I gotta cut somebody, I gotta fire somebody, I gotta terminate somebody. Or you don't have enough. Or I don't have enough to a point where we're pulling our hair out and working way, 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 way too many hours. Now, you know, we have a lot of restaurant friends that don't work in their business, all they work on their business. Right. I like working the floor. I or, like being part of it. I like being part of, of, of talking to guests. We have some friends that, that like don't even step in their restaurant on the weekends. They just work Monday through Friday. They work in the office and the weekends they don't even step in. No, yeah. I don't think I could do no, that. No, I don't think we Because I'm, I'm a people person. Mm -hmm. And I like talking to people. I love helping people with wine. I love telling the stories and the passion about where we get our salt from, where our palm sugar comes from, why I know this person, mm -hmm. where our cognac comes from. And that to me is like, that's, meaning, that's it. That's part of our passion is all of this. It's what we do. It's what we do. It's what we do. So yeah, the hardest part, people, employees. Mm -hmm. Now we do a very in-depth training program where every, once a week we are, all of our front of staff has, has to get together and do a workshop and we do lots of videos and we do a lot of follow-up. Mm -hmm. But you know, the one thing, once you get staff, and now here's, here's what I found that works for us. You get somebody that's trainable. Good attitude. Mm -hmm. you, sometimes you hire people that have 10, 15 years experience. They come in here. They come in here. They, they know everything. They know they everything. Tell everybody everything. But they don't know what you like. Yeah. And they fight you and they resist you. Yeah. It's not worth right? it. It's not worth Wait it. Wait staff, cooks. They're like, well, this is the way we should be doing it. But I mean, that's... I, but that's not the way we do, do it. We do it. And I'm all open for ideas. Don't get me wrong. I want an employee to come in here and show me a better way. But if we set something up for a while and this is why we do something, don't go around like we had one employee recently that we'd say this is what we do and this is a two ounce ladle in here for a specific and reason. Do it totally and he'd put it in a squirt bottle. bottle. Yeah. And then the chef would tell him and he'd say, okay, and then a few days later it's back in the squirt bottle. I'm like, no, no, no. We don't put this in a squirt bottle because you can't measure the two ounce portion. You stick a two ounce ladle in it, so when you ladle it, you automatically know it's a two ounce portion. That's consistency for the guests. So that's a change in the wrong direction. But if they're gonna make a change in the right direction, hey, I'm all hey, for that. All for it. We've had a lot of employees, even just recently, that have made great changes, and I'm like, all for that. But here's the thing they need to understand. Run it by us. Yep. Run the change by us because we're the owners. That's a phone, go ahead and answer that. It's over okay. there. It's over there, that's line two. So. You know, we're all about change and we're all about employees, you know, input and you tell us what works, you know, what you think. But you get an employee who has 15 years experience and they all of a sudden think that, hey, I know what's right and nobody's going to tell me any different and I don't care what you say, you're the boss and I'm going to do it my own way regardless of what you say, Marcus. And those are the kind of employees that are just like, ah, you just want to like strangle yourself or strangle them. You get somebody who's teachable and a great attitude, and that's all that I can ask for. I don't mind showing somebody something once or twice, right, Jamie? No. Nope. Let me show you once, let me show you twice. If I have to show you something three times, chances are you can't apprehend or yeah. comprehend or the lesson. Hold the retention. Hold right. the retention. Okay. You can't comprehend. So we hired some people recently that had no zero cooking experience. And they're doing awesome. Right? Because they want to, they're trying. My very first executive chef job, they said to me, they go, Aren't you a little young for this job? I was 24, mm -hmm. and I said, no, you want me right now in my prime. And I was interviewed against people that were 45 and 55 for this job, people that had 
30 years more experience, 20 more years experience than me. And I said, no, you want me right now, I'm in my prime, and the reason why I'm in my prime is because I have to prove myself. Somebody who's 55 has yeah. already proven themselves, and there's not much more in their career to do. I said, at 24 years old, I'm gonna come in here and kick butt and prove myself, because I have to for myself and for my career and for you guys. First job I took within two months, what kind of raise did I get? They gave you a nice raise. Ten thousand dollar raise. Who gets a ten thousand dollar raise at twenty four years old in your first three months of work, two months of work? Yeah. I did because I went in there and kicked butt and I showed them that I'm here and I'm dedicated. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I was taken off every other Sunday at the place because I had a great staff. I had a really good staff. I had a strong sous chef who now owns two restaurants in Colorado. And we were just like, this was great. Every other Sunday off, it was a country club, a busy country mm -hmm. club. And I was in charge of now thirty people were reporting to me two different restaurants, um, it was great, you know, but so you wanna get people that are trainable and then have a good attitude. I had a good attitude and I was trainable and I could kick butt and I had to prove myself at a young age and I did that. So anything else about staff? No. So if you own a place, tr manage a place, train, 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 retrain, 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 keep training, do Constant. role playing, do workshops, get get member feedback, uh, member, member feedback, get, uh, um, Guest feedback. Guest, no, not guest feedback. Employee feedback. Oh, employee feedback. Employee feedback. Keep going, keep going, and guest feedback. Keep going and going and going. I don't care if you have to. You know, the, the best single book that I've ever written, written that I've ever read. read on employee management, business management, Chet Holmes, the Ultimate Sales Machine. Read it, Chet Holmes, the Ultimate Sales Machine. He says if you do a once a week training and videotape it, document it. In 52 weeks, you will have the most complete training program out of any other mm -hmm. business out there. You get your staff together, you do a workshop, and you train, train, and get feedback, and you mm -hmm. train. 52 weeks later, once a week, you document it, intense training mm -hmm. program. Yep. That's the bottom line. And role play, he says the key is role playing. You have to role play 150, I think it's 150 times he says, Shed Holmes, for a, me a staff member to get it right. Wow. Imagine answering the phone. You got a new staff member that answers the phone. How many times did it take to get in their flow to answer the phone? It takes a lot of times. Yep. You should be role playing with your staff every single day on answering the phone. And your staff, most yep. restaurants have a pre-shift meeting and some restaurants have a hostess that answers the phone 100% of the time. But even with her or him, the host or hostess, you should be role playing with them every single day, different scenarios. You ask the wait staff, what were some questions you got yesterday on the menu? And those are the questions you ask the host right. while you're role playing about answering the phone. And guess what? 150 times later, you're gonna have a host that has answer the phone much better than it did 150 times ago. Yep. So that's it. People, get staff, retain staff, um, nurture your staff and and you know and um, look back so most people say that <laughs> you never finish I, I there's so much to it. I know most people say <laughs> that that you were there's finished 10 minutes ago most people say not most people a lot of people say oh this is a staffing problem it's a staffing problem but you have certain people that say no it's a marketing problem you have to market to get staff like how you market to get guests and we did something a little tricky last time not tricky but sneaky where we offered a $250 um, gift card to our guests for for quality leads for staff and I have some restaurant buddies that have done that as well with great success mm -hmm. leave your comments um, hit like if you like this video go check out my website 50 mistakes.com it's a business consulting website go to our restaurant website aromatimebistro.com there's links here uh, in the description uh, or there's some way you can get to it in the description and uh, hopefully we'll do more live YouTubes yeah. thanks for watching